Greetings, Joe with EMP Cycle Works back at you. Today we're working on a 2018 uh, Harley Davidson Fat Boy. Uh, what we're doing is installing or updating the fueling oil pump that's in it, the one with the the seal, um, the backing plate seal for the oil pump. So that's what we got going on. It's already torn apart, as you can see. Let's get it back together. First step is to clean the gasket surface using maroon Scotch-Brite and then we're going to hit it with our advanced auto parts brake cleaner on a microfiber rag. Um, the gasket surface is to clean up any oil or residual um, Scotch-Brite that may be there. Then we're going to lube up our o-rings and install them into the engine case first. We're going to use engine oil and lube up the, the gear rotor here. Install it into the inner part of the pump body. The fueling oil pump's not clearance for the pinion shaft, so this rotor can go on either way. This one's going on the way that it was installed, though. Originally, that is. So we're going to make sure we lube up our backing plate. And then I'm going to hold the backing plate in while I install it by just a couple screws here, just hand threaded, threaded on there. And this is the whole reason why we're doing this, to install this seal. Originally these fueling oil pumps didn't have a recess for the seal. Harley started using the seal in 2019 to alleviate some of the pressure issues, and they come standard on S&S and fueling pumps uh, nowadays, from 2019 on at least. Now get the rotor close to the position that it needs to be in to install it on the pinion shaft, and make sure you push the pump body into the case o-ring squarely. Um, once it goes in, it should just snap right in, just like that. Very important not to force it here. Now the outer, uh, the feed pump gets lubed. Usually I use assembly lube, but this has already been installed, so and I'm gonna be starting it up here pretty quickly. Uh, make sure the pump body itself is lubed. And then this rotor assembly will go on. Uh, it's important to put it on the way that it came off. Now I'm going to lube up the T-Man Performance Cam. Um, these parts have all been installed before, so I know the clearance. So I don't have to worry about uh, making sure any clearances are, are good. And then lube up the, the cam bearing and install the camshaft. And just spin it to make sure everything is still, still good on it. Now I'm going to lube up the the cam support plate, the cam, a little bit more oil into the oil pump itself. And don't forget to remove those bolts that we put on the oil pump before we slide the cam plate on and make sure the O-ring is still in the, the case here. Now, make sure the cam support plate is moved up and uh, ready to reinstall. And like I said, all this stuff has been run before, so there's a little bit of wear where the oil pump rides against the cam support plate, but it's just the anodizing that came off. Now fueling wants you to use ARP Ultra Torque on the, the bolts here on the cam support plate and on the oil pump, so that's what I'm doing here, putting that on there. And installing the, the oil pump bolts. Same thing with all the cam support plate bolts here. And then I'm just going to run them in hand tight. So the bike's in, fit in sixth gear with the plugs out so I can spin the rear wheel. Um, what I, the goal here is to center that oil pump in the cam support plate. So once we spin it a couple times, I'm going to hand tighten the oil pump bolts and then spin the rear wheel again a couple times. And uh, like I said, the goal is to center that oil pump. The only thing that centers the oil pump is actually physically spinning it. There's no dowels or anything that, that on the oil pump. Now we're gonna torque the cam support plate bolts to 40 inch pounds, 80 inch pounds, and then the final torque of 120 inch pounds um, in sequence. This is probably overkill for the cam support plate, but I'd like to just cover all my bases and make sure that that it's it's torqued properly and that the, the oil pump has the best chance of being centered. 
And this is just the showing the final torque sequence here. And then I go around and double check and make sure that I have 120 inch pounds. And then I spin the rear wheel and basically do the same thing for the cam support plate bolts. I'll torque them to 40 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern here. Spin the rear wheel. Eighty inch pounds, and every time I spin the rear wheel, I'm looking for any difference in in how hard it is to spin the wheel. I don't want any binding. Any binding means you know it's not as centered as it should be. And then a final torque of 120 inch pounds here, and our cam support plate and oil pump are centered to the crankshaft. And then I go around and just double check everything. I don't want anything coming loose. In all honesty, not using Loctite is kind of nerve-wracking to me, but that's what Fueling recommends, so that's what we're going to do. And then microfiber rag, clean up all that ultra torque lube, and uh, we got a beautiful Fueling cam plate installed here. And this was already installed before, so I'm just double checking the, the cam sprocket alignment to the pinion shaft sprocket. I mean, it was like I said, it was already built, but I always want to make sure because I'm the last one in there. If it's off, it's on me, so I'm double checking it. And this one actually happened to be under three thousandths uh, difference between the sprockets, so really, really good uh, team and performance is really good work. All right, next step: install the cam chain and the and time it with the cam both cam sprockets. Pretty easy, just double check. And then on these ones, the threads get a drop of red Loctite on the, the cam bolt and the pinion bolt. And then I put a little bit of that ultra torque assembly lube under the washer so that there's no drag there when I go to torque it. And then I will just hand tighten these and torque them to 15 foot-pounds each and because it's in gear I can hold the rear brake and that will lock the motor allowing me to torque this. Just a little trick I use. Um, 15 foot-pounds and then I back them off one complete turn and then the pinion shaft sprocket's gonna get 24 foot-pounds and the cam sprocket's gonna get 34 foot-pounds for a final torque. And then more engine engine oil on the chain and the, the sprockets, just to make sure everything's good and lubed. And I'm gonna spin it, uh, again, checking for binding, but also so I can lube up the chain more thoroughly. And then blue Loctite on the fasteners that hold the, the cam chain tensioner on. And these are threaded on and torqued to 120 inch-pounds. And then, yeah, torqued to 120 inch-pounds. Next step is to install the lifters. Now when I removed them, I marked on them front intake Front exhaust, rear intake, rear exhaust. It's kind of hard to see on these SNS lifters, but um, once I took them off, I marked them, then put them in my vat of oil here, just to kind of try to stop any air from being introduced into the, the lifter, so I don't have to worry about rebleeding, rebleeding them on the bench. I just throw them in here, adjust the push rods, and, and we should be good to go. The bath of oil also keeps any kind of dirt or anything any dust or anything that might be that might accidentally get introduced onto the lifters it also serves to lube them very well and the lifter bores so our SNS lifter cuffs go on next these things are great uh, just to increase the valve train stability uh, blue Loctite on the bolts and they are torqued to 120 inch pounds
once those are torqued, the gaskets go on. Uh, they only go on one way. Same thing with the lifter blocks, you can't reverse them. So they, they go on, blue Loctite on the fasteners. And these are also are torqued to 120 inch pounds. Uh, just a side note, these are 12 point fasteners and with the cylinders installed, the inner ones can be kind of a pain. Um, I didn't really record how I got them on there, but it's using a wrench that's, that's bent in a specific way, let's just say. And then again, clean up my uh, gasket surface just to make sure there's no oil that dripped on it. Fresh gasket on my cleaned cam cover. I like to put a bolt or two in the cam cover through the gasket just to hold it in place while I, while I install it. And all these fasteners get blue Loctite. Same thing, most, most any uh, quarter inch fasteners on Harley gets 120 inch pounds roughly. Um, that's just the setting that I use. And then I take a clean microfiber and wipe off my grubby fingerprints. That's how you update a fueling oil pump backing plate. Hey, thanks for watching me update that fueling oil pump on that uh, Harley Davidson Milwaukee 8 engine. I recorded that a couple weeks ago. I just got around to editing now. So put it out there. And uh, if you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching EMP Cycle Works.